not leaving my son. No, I'm not leaving my son. They want his organs. Terrence C. Howard was an Alabama football player who was in an accident or car crash. And basically, when he was in a car crash, he got out the car to check on the other crash victims. And when he turned around or something like that happened, another car had hit him. Now, he was, you know, picked up by the hospital and they named him like a John Doe or something like that. But he was still alive. But, you know, they couldn't get in touch with his family and stuff like that. So I guess days and days go by. But anyways, his family ended up finding out. So, you know, they go to the hospital down there in North Carolina and everything like that. And um, he doing good so far, they say, and everything like that. I guess the day he was about to check out of the hospital, um... They about to get his medical papers, his legs and body was moved, everything was dang near okay. And he's about to switch him to another hospital. But, um, the, you know, I guess he say two doctors or some doctors sent another doctor or a nurse in the room to put something in his IV. And that's where all this stuff right here transpired. Now they thinking like they were trying to get buddy organs. I just want to say prayers up to Terrence T family and rest in peace to him, you know. Because I didn't trust leaving my baby. They called the police on me because I didn't trust them. My husband wasn't here. And, I and that's baby. why and we we also called Jessica McCool, to, um, who was on the door. She sat there and okayed y'all with a straight face because yeah. she knew she wasn't going to do anything anyways. Yeah. She had already said that she wasn't going to do anything. She put it on a note? Yeah. She put it in a note. She was like, I can't do anything. He told me not to. Yeah, she can't. No, that's why I'm telling you, boy. Okay, y'all look, we're in the hospital right now. Dr. Herman, who's outside, and Dr. Jessica McCool have decided to put something in Terrence's IV to kill him. He's been fine, stable. The moment that we got ready to get him out of here and transfer him, they interfered. And as soon as we got the medical records to, turn, to give over to the doctors, they came and had somebody come in here and put something in his line. Dr. Jessica McCool, Dr. Herman of, of, of this hospital, which is uh, uh, Carolina's Medical Center, Atrium here in North Carolina. In North Carolina, right now. I'm telling you what they're doing. You see him right now. His mama's working on him. On, they, they, they out there and they're, they're saying that they're going to let him die. We asked him to come in and do something about it. They decided not to come in here and do nothing about it. Right here at this hospital, Dr. Myers, Dr. Miller, all of them decided to, to let him die because he was living and they didn't want to be exposed. His feet was, his legs was moving today. Everything was moving on him today, legs and everything. And they knew he had a bowel movement and been having bowel movements. They didn't want to chart him and sit him in his chart or nothing. So right now they're trying to let him die. They put something in his in his IV. They put something in there to kill him. And, and of course, you know, we're not medically inclined. And the people that we had here that were medically inclined, they waited till they leave and left and then they got in here and did something. I'm telling you right now, they allowing him to die right now. I asked him to come in here, they stood at the door and walked away. I'm not leaving my son. No, I'm not leaving my son. They want his organs. They I'm trying to get the phone. It is what it is. They have to begin to prepare the body. Ain't no, ain't his heart is still beating. His heart is still beating. They got it. They got it. They got to prove his heart ain't beating. They got to prove what it is. They have to begin to prepare the body. Ain't no, ain't his heart is still beating. His heart is still beating. A new football season at a new school. 19 year old Terrence Howard posted about his new plans on X. Those plans took a devastating turn when he got into a minor car crash in North Carolina. His parents say he immediately went to check on the other car. He turned around, and at some point in time, from him turning around from them, heading back to the car at some point. He was struck by a vehicle. His parents say he suffered life threatening injuries. They're hoping to bring him back to Texas to get a second opinion. We just need a hospital in Texas, in Houston, preferably. Uh, we have to make a, a level one trauma center, a post trauma center that would be willing uh, to take him in uh, with the diagnosis that he, uh, prognosis that he had. Struck it not to say before I ever had a son. The Lord gave me a promise that he was coming through a dream who he was, and I knew that he was coming, and I held on to that promise, and I'm still holding on. He's even here. Though
I'm just not letting go because I know what the Lord promised me. Terrence T. Howard, a former Alabama football player, was moving his belongings from Alabama to Durham when he was involved in a traffic accident. While assisting the other motorist involved in the crash, Terrence was struck by a car. The circumstances surrounding this second accident raised suspicions. Was it a tragic coincidence, or was there something more sinister at play? Terrence was transported to Carolina Medical Hospital in critical condition. In a live video shared on Facebook, his parents are seen in the hospital room with their son, visibly concerned. His father can be seen trying to help Terrence, while his mother is heard saying, I'm not leaving my baby. Terrence's father alleges that two doctors, Herman and Justice McCoy, administered something into Terrence's IV that led to his sudden decline. According to his father, Terrence was stable, his legs were moving, and he was on the verge of being discharged before this intervention. He went from moving to near death almost immediately after the IV was spiked. Adding to the mystery, Terrence's parents believe there might be a darker motive behind their son's rapid decline. They suspect that there might be an organ trafficking ring at play, where hospitals and certain doctors collude to harvest organs from unsuspecting patients. The idea that rich individuals on the black market could be behind this operation is a chilling thought. This situation has raised many questions. What was in the IV? Why did Terrence's condition worsen so quickly? Was the second car accident a deliberate attempt to ensure his critical condition for organ harvesting? Why did the hospital call the police on the grieving parents? Some people suggest that there might be more to the story than meets the eye. Theories have emerged about potential malpractice, a cover-up, or even an organized effort to traffic organs. The hospital's decision to involve law enforcement has only added to these suspicions. It is crucial to have a thorough and transparent investigation into Terrence T., Howard's tragic death. His family's plea for answers must be heard, and any potential wrongdoing must be addressed to ensure justice is served.